Today, Fixing the Money Thing brings you another powerful message, the power of your words. The enemy has no authority, you understand that. All he has is intimidation and fear. Your offensive advantage is a supernatural strategy operated quickly, with intent and courage and authority. If you hang back, friend, you've already lost. I'm Gary Cassie, and for nine years, we lived in a chaotic, stress-filled, visionless life. I cried out to God. He said, I want my people free. America's financial coach, Gary Cassie, shares the kingdom principles that changed his life, defeated his debt, and set him free. You'll never find your destiny until you fix the money thing. Proverbs 18.21 reminds us, the tongue can bring death or life. What are your words inviting? Uh, God's word always encourages, so we're gonna jump right into it. You remember last week, I was talking about your enemy. That's right, very personal, your enemy. And I wanna kinda continue down that line today, so get your Bibles out, get your pens and paper out, whatever, however you take notes. You're going to need to remember this one. 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8. Be alert and sober-minded. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like not a roaring lion. He's not a roaring lion. He, he's like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. To devour. He wants to take you out, friend. You have an enemy. And because of that, you need to understand he is strategizing right now. As, as we sit here in church... He is strategizing on ways to get involved in your life. And so you need to be sober-minded. We said last week that means you need to be uh, aware of circumstances, possible consequences, prudent. You're on alert. That's right. You're on alert. You're looking for him to stick his head up somewhere. And then I said to be alert for what? Deception, Deception and fear. Deception and fear. Deception and fear. Why fear? Because that if you pick up fear in your life, you've already got some deception. You got a deception pro heart problem, right? Because all the Bible promises are yes and amen. You have God's authority. Fear is not part of God's kingdom. So if you pick up fear, that means you've already been deceived. So you want to be on alert for deception and fear. Fear indicates there's a problem. You got you to address that, get involved with that, deal with that fear and replace it with confidence in God's word. Amen. Of course, deception, let me say this. What is the antidote for deception? Truth, that's right. Truth is, and Romans chapter 12 again says that do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you'll be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. This is so vital to your life. Being able to umpire your thoughts and umpire what motivates you. Is it God or is it not? Well, the word of God's your answer. It's going to help you. The word of God is, is active, the Bible says in Hebrews. It's discerning between soul and spirit, the, the spiritual and the fleshly. It's going to help you in life. Now, what do you do about that roar, that fear? You see, fear, the enemy has no authority. You understand that. All he has is intimidation and fear. And we need to talk about that today because that's his normal mode of operation. Ephesians chapter 6 is a very important scripture to your life in this battle. And you are in a battle. Let me say it again. You are in a battle if you recognize it or not. You have an enemy. Verse number 10 says, finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so you can take your stand against the devil's what? Schemes. See, he is setting schemes. He's devising schemes as we sit here. He is your enemy, and he is prowling around trying to catch you off guard. Our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers. These are the high rulers. Remember, kingdom, uh, Satan operates in a kingdom. He has authorities, levels of authority. So rulers are the high rulers of his kingdom against the authorities against the powers of this dark world and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. That's, that's down here in this realm where you live. Therefore, put on the full armor of God so that when the day of evil comes, 
You may be able to stay, uh, stand your ground, take your ground, keep your inheritance, keep what the Bible says, stand on the ground. What God says is yours is yours. Don't move. See, fear always causes you to back off. The intent of fear is that you give up or back up. Am I right? And so you don't do that. You take your stand against fear. And after you've done everything to stand, stand firm then with the belt of truth buckled around your waist. Now, Paul is giving an analogy of the Roman armor because that's where these people live. They were obviously being, you know, controlled by Rome. But the Roman armor, the belt of truth, okay, the belt of truth buckled around your waist. And then the, the uh, plate of righteousness in place, that breastplate of righteousness in place. You see, it's set on that belt of truth. See, if the Bible says you're righteous, that's truth. And you are. It doesn't matter how you feel. This is a legal issue, friend. Listen, you need to understand how to fight with truth. When the enemy comes to cause you to feel condemned, that is simply a feeling, but it is not truth. You need to pick up that truth and speak back to that lie. Do you understand what I'm saying? This is your weaponry. This is your protection against the enemy's schemes to lie, steal, destroy in your life. You need to understand it's all based on truth. You need to become your own attorney in life and declare your legal standing in the enemy's face. So stand firm. All right. With your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. You got to be able to move in battle. You got to be able to hear and move and be ready in battle. In addition to all this, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish a few of the flaming arrows, right? Say the word all, all, all. What, what is the flaming arrow, by the way? Thoughts. Thoughts that come against your, your mind, against your life. And this is, a, this is a very vital understanding. The shield of faith is, of course, faith is being fully persuaded of what God says. And it is not near your body. The shield is outside your body. So it extinguishes these thoughts that can produce fear instantly. Instantly. Meaning they don't even enter into your meditation, your consciousness. Now here's something you need to understand. If a thought gets past that faith shield, if there's no faith there and you pick that meditation up, that begins to produce, just like faith does, Fear is simply perverted faith. When you pick it up and begin to meditate on it, it begins to produce. You begin to incubate it. And so we need to understand this. If a thought brings a twang of fear to you, you need to understand there was no shield of faith. Let me say this again. This will help someone. If a thought causes a twang of fear in your life, understand you're not in faith. There was no shield of faith to extinguish that thought. If it's extinguished, it has no effect. Are you understanding this? Okay, so again, you're on alert, remember, for fear. It's an indicator that something's wrong. The enemy is going to push the fear button. He's going to try to gain access. He's going to send thoughts and circumstances, and you need to be aware of that and know how to handle it. So if that thought causes a pang of fear, you need to realize, uh-oh, I'm vulnerable there. The enemy's picked up on that. I need, to get, I need to gird myself. I need to get into the word of God, truth, and get reestablished on the foundation of God's word. Make sure that belt's buckled, right? Make sure that, right, that plate's in place, you know? Get that shield of faith out there. Now it goes on and says this, in addition, take up the shield of faith, which we just talked about, Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Now, my, my interpretation, the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit is the word of God. Because the helmet of salvation are the thoughts of God. Thinking the thoughts of God, knowing the thoughts of God, as Romans chapter 12 says, I'm renewing my mind, being transformed by thinking the thoughts of God. I then know God's good and perfect will for my life, which means I'm rejecting something that's opposite of that. That is a helmet of safety, helmet of safety, that I'm thinking the thoughts of God. I have the thoughts of God that act like an umpire in my thought life. And everything, as you know, begins with a thought. But also the sword of the spirit is the word of God. But this is a little bit different because the sword of the spirit is in your mouth. The sword of the spirit is in your mouth. Got it? 
what you say. Now notice, uh, it goes on and says, and pray in the spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all the Lord's people. So praying in the spirit uh, is, uh, brings a strategy of the battle. So let's review. All of these things are protective, except really two things. One is offensive, is the sword of the spirit, the word of God. And then of course, on an offense, you gotta have strategy. So praying in the spirit brings understanding of the strategy to catch the enemy off guard and stay outside of his jurisdiction. You got it? You gotta walk it out, friend. You can't just hear it in church because you live in a battle. You gotta understand that.